The tide eats the sandbank, pushing bodies into their dwellings. The scorching afternoon settles into the town's inlet and lingers on suburban corrugated roofs. Flimsy thongs slap the asphalt roads. Children's supple skin circle the elderly residents, aged callous souls, all christened with sand between their toes. Strolling away from local drinking holes into one-storey dwellings, they bow down to the glow of their enshrined plasma screens and slump into a heap. The light from television sets blare and flash through house windows. Audience laughter echoes into front lawns and trickles onto the road. The town breathes deeply under the open sky. I was seven. No, I was eight. I can't remember when the cinema closed down. No, 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 no this is true. We used to say, oh, we'll meet you inside. <laughs> or you, or you, it was only dining. Uh, no, I, I didn't see the movies. Uh, I didn't come to any movies here, no. We came to Mass here, but I didn't go to movies, no. <laughs> you still went, you still went, you were brave, yeah? Uh, or you'd go down the side and sneak in Yeah, there. sneak up, and then when the picture starts. <laughs> get in the stores, crawl along the ground and go up. Go up, <laughs> but the black is... They, they, they'd, be they'd be watching you. <laughs> it was crappy, yeah, it was crappy to be honest. It was only dining. Yeah, it was the cheapest seats. It was right in front of the screen. Right it was always trailers. Trailers. Yeah. 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 trailers. You'd see yeah. the yeah. 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 for the next yeah. week's man. Yeah. Yeah. Raw man. Hot nights. Raw height. Must be the the We came to Mass here. In front of the screen. We came to Mass here. Going around the corner. Dad had a huge role in the whole of that uh, area because um, him and his brother Eric were, you know, the ones that got the, the bus company going and the taxis and then the pictures. And you think about, it, I mean, that's that's transport, entertainment, the, the way life worked on the on the peninsula. You know, for somewhere to go was the theatre, and the only place to get, only to get around was by bus. So he knew that many people. You know, he drove the kids to school, and then they grew up and they went to the pictures. They purchased the Woi Woi Cinema. Uh, as a going concern, which seated uh, 1,100 people. Uh, then they purchased the Edelong Cinema, which I'm pretty sure they purchased as is. And then they built the Amina Theatre. Um, the Amina Theatre was built in the 50s, and the others were, you know, 1930s. So they were very, very successful, incredibly successful. Now, the buses were running at the same time, so that was the bus pro proprietor. And he was um, he was running the three theatres. He did this in conjunction, as I mentioned, with his two brothers, Walter and Rupert. Theatres went very well for another couple of years, but then, of course, the arrival of television just destroyed the industry completely. Dad ran uh, the three theatres at a loss for around about ten years. He sold the Woi Woi Theatre to a group that built the the uh, shopping centre at Woi Woi, and he sold the your minor theatre to the uh, to the Shell Company, and they put up a Shell garage there, and then he s uh, sold the Edelong Cinema uh, to I think uh, Gosford City Council and the Edelong Cinema, because it happens to be the Edelong Senior Citizen Centre now, still running, still the original building with a brick facade out the front. Of course, the Edel the Woi Woi and your minor theatres are both were both knocked down. When Dad was running three theatres. He only did the switch between Etlong and Woi Woi because they were the two theatres he had for a long time. Now you might think, why? Why is it viable to run the same shows 
at this cinema and this cinema and just run them in the reverse order. Now, because of, by today's standards, they're very close together, those cinemas. But in those days, there was no transport other than public transport, which is fairly you know, intermittent. So people who lived around that cinema went to that cinema. People who lived around this cinema went to that cinema. And they didn't bother going to the other because it was too far away to get there by bicycle or whatever. So it was viable to run uh, the two films here and the same two films over here in the reverse order. In the 40s and 50s, there was a lot of halls that were converted into you know, portable seating taken in. A uh, screen popped up the front of a room, a projector put up the back of the hall and they showed movies and they made their money. They all started off in a small way. Back in the, you know, the early part of the century, it was. Avoca started off in a, a backyard. The person who built the cinema that's there now, the Avoca Theatre, he started off in his own backyard, open-air cinema. And he screened movies down the side of the hill and there were seats on the side of the hill and people enjoyed the movies overlooking the ocean. So it was a nice atmosphere. I think the Central Coast, because it was such a vast area and... Uh, the opportunity was there to operate cinemas in the, the local area. You know, Rimba, Lizaro, Erina, Davestown, all those everywhere had a, a cinema. People used to go a lot. It was the recreation of the time. People had permanently booked seats. Sometimes you had to wait for people to die off or move away before you could get a seat. And that's the way it was back when it was in its heyday. People went to the pictures all the time, you know, sitting in the aisles on Friday and Saturday night. So they were, they were on nearly every night. Yeah. That was the way it was. People loved to go to the pictures. And uh, that was a pretty big area down there in, even in those days. And there was nothing else to do. You've got to think about it. There were no clubs to go to, no RSL clubs, no poker machines. Um, uh, yeah, you went fishing, or you went on a moonlight cruise on a ferry, or you went to the pictures. So everybody viewed the cinema as the um, as the place to be. And of course, then they ran church services in the cinemas on on the weekends as well. So they were not multifunctional, but they were used for other things. Yeah. You know, with the trailers of the westerns and yeah. Yeah. going over a cliff, we well, have to wait for the big one. Save our precious king, come and live our home. At those days we ran two features. We ran a feature before and a feature last, and unless it was a special, at night time we often only ran the one film. This particular time we were running um, The Endless Summer, and uh, uh, Endless Summer uh, won. It was a very, very popular surfing movie. I mean, it just went all over Australia and to rave reviews and, and sold out audiences everywhere. So we advertised that it was coming to the Central Coast, and it was coming to your minor theatre, which was a pretty big theatre and we knew we'd pretty well fill it up with surfies. So that afternoon, the projectionist who should have come down and had a look through the Yogi, uh, through the uh, Endless Summit, didn't do that. And that will, was proven later in the evening. When um, we ran the Endless Summer with Interval in the middle, and uh, of course the movie was packed with uh, surfies, move, the theatre was packed with surfies, and uh, they were all milling around out the front at uh, half time, and they all piled back in again, and we went straight into the first spool, of the second drum, and it just happened to be the Yogi Bear story. Um, something they, the surfers did not want to see. They were all psyched up after watching the first part. And of course, I got moving through Africa and all over the world, and uh, there was the Yogi Bear story. Well, they just freaked out, and so we had to call the police. Um, they were out the front milling around, rioting and yelling and screaming. And um, In the early days, it was one projectionist looked after one cinema because you had to be there all the time because. The work involved was every 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you'd have to change reels. And that's why we always had two projectors. Part one, part two, part three, you'd alternate right through the whole movie. And don't put the wrong spool on or everybody will know. So you had to be very careful about that. Never mix your film up. 
as a projectionist, you always had film that broke or went on the floor. And I try, you try not to stop. If you, if you stop a show, everybody knows. And if you can keep going, you did. And if I had the film break and I could retrieve it, I did. I was told, don't get involved as a projectionist. It's a dying trade. It's, they're not, they're gonna have automation and it won't last. I retired from cinemas as a projectionist in 1999. So I did survive many years as a projectionist. And it's only now that the projectionists have, have been done away with. Large cinema chains focus on the cities. So they build very large, very glitzy, uh, amazing complexes. Uh, but they only do that where there is high density population. They do not enter into regional Australia. So regional Australia is enormously disadvantaged because those people, those companies are not interested in them. And that is an area where independent cinema comes to the fore. And they are often small family run businesses. Um, they, they have often been established for many decades uh, and they provide a service in their community which is quite critical in those communities. So it, it's an important thing. So Hoyts and Greater Union and uh, the, the large chains uh, provide, uh, provide a commodity where there is a large population. The independents tend to be more personalised um, right across Australia. They do an amazing job uh, bringing their own flavour of entertainment, uh, entertainment, yes, it is entertainment, uh, and they bring entertainment. It was a shame to lose the Yamada the, Theatre because it was a magnificent looking theatre, Art Deco style, built by a local company, Plumes, did a fantastic job of it, but it was virtually a lemon from the day it got going, it was the, the uh, television had was starting to make some inroads then, and and then the, the, there was a real decline. Eventually, Dad turned it into a roller skating rink, and uh, it ran as a roller skating rink for a while. But then again, there just wasn't enough patronage to to make enough money to keep to pay the upkeep on such a large building. So uh, that one went. Things just get too difficult. Film companies, oh, I won't say that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of politics involved in being an exhibitor. And it's not an easy life. Cinema still survived, though. I mean, as we know, cinema still survive today, but they're run differently.